11 million Russians have direct relatives in Ukraine. Siblings, parents, children, telling their Russian relatives on the phone what is happening in Ukraine. And they don't believe it. Why? The Russian disinformation campaign around Ukraine started in 2014 in preparation for the destruction of a democratic Ukraine. And yes, for eight years, people were practically being brainwashed by Russian television. But is that enough of an explanation? After all, how can television be more convincing than your own children, your own siblings? The answer is psychological. They believe the television more because they want to believe the television. There is an emotional need to feel right, to belong to the good guys, to feel great as a nation. There are several misconceptions around disinformation. And the first misconception is that people are at the mercy of disinformation where it is spread. But that is not at all the case. There is a second important factor, the emotional need to believe that disinformation. Where people do not have such an emotional need, they will bypass manipulative mass media and inform themselves independently. We see this in countries where mass media is free and is easily bypassed and ignored to find obscure conspiracy theories somewhere that fit into one's worldview. People seek out the information they want to believe. We can block radical channels. We can and must deplatform Nazis. We can and must fact check. These things are all good and do serve a purpose, but they don't change the human need to believe certain lies. When the world becomes too complex, people want to believe stories that supposedly explain and simplify that complexity. Stories in which there are the good guys and the bad guys, in which you yourself belong to the good guys. Those who feel no control over a digitalized, globalized world want to believe stories that say someone up there is in control. This is how anti-Semitic conspiracy theories are born. We will not be able to counter this phenomenon through pure regulation. If we want people to engage with information critically and objectively, we need to strengthen something that goes beyond mere media literacy, namely self-efficacy. The feeling of being a responsible, indispensable part of society ourselves, not simply a victim or a consumer, but a creator of one's society. This means strengthening democracy education, local structures and community support, social programs and welfare, as well as participation. These things are not luxury when it comes to building resilient democratic societies. These are the very basics. The second misconception is that disinformation is aimed at convincing people that something is true. Many people seem confused that so much of Russian disinformation seems outrageously unbelievable. Are we really supposed to believe that Ukraine was building nuclear weapons? No, we are not. When in 2017 Donald Trump first lied about the size of his inauguration crowd, an event that we all have seen with our very own eyes, journalists were baffled what he was trying to accomplish. Back then, I wrote an editorial piece about how that reminded me of a typical propaganda move from the KGB playbook. Steve Bannon coined this move, flooding the zone with shit. The strategy is to tell so many different lies so loudly that truth is lost. I called it the sky is green. How does it work? Well, I say the sky is green. You look up, confirm and confusedly correct me, um, no, the sky is blue. I differ, the sky is green. You fact check that, present me with photos and a spectrum analysis insisting the sky is blue. I calmly state, the sky is green. You get irritated and shout, it is blue, you moron. Now I respond, there, there, no need to be uncivil about this. You think it's blue, I think it's green. We are both entitled to our own opinion I guess we have no way of knowing which color the sky has. 
And that is the point. Not convincing you that the sky is green, but convincing you that the truth, if there is any, is unknowable. Now, if the truth is unknowable, we as a democratic society have hardly anything to talk about. We can't organize. We can't make decisions. There is no objective truth that functions as a cohesive. We need an authority to decide what is true and what is to do about it. A strong man, if you will. If you want to build an authoritarian state, first destroy the truth and all who help communicate it. Beside climate change, one of the main challenges of these following years will be the fight against international authoritarianism and fascism. We see these movements utilizing both the internet and classical media to flood the zone with shit. For many years now, we have tried to counter the firehose of falsehoods from squirt guns of fact-checking, always reacting, always in the defense. It never really worked. But there has been one moment that gave me a glimmer of hope. It was when Russia had amassed its army at the Ukrainian border and US security services started preemptively sharing information. They are going to attack. What that did is it created a raincoat of expectation against the fire hose of falsehoods. The narrative had been set. So when Russia did invade, there was hardly any of the usual confusedness and disbelief. This, to me, seems to be the best strategy. Communicate early, communicate transparently, communicate boldly and clearly. I believe in truth, even now. But building a society that has freedom of speech, that is open and democratic and solidaric and honest with itself, takes work. That is the work we need to invest.